60 laps. He's the leading contender for the Bent Visor Lap Leader of the Race Award, but 100 laps to go, and anything can happen. Let's find out what will. Green flag, P.J. Jones restarts this race half a lap down, but he's out there. Rutman Trouble. doesn't take off. Rutman's truck would not take off. And somebody's blown up. That's Hornaday. He does another 360. That's two today, but he's not going to go again. No, I don't believe. And John, or rather Steve Portengay, spins the coffee critic truck at turn two, trying to get around and miss Hornaday. Yellow flag fever in Missouri today. And Portengay, the Southwest Tour champ, is going to get going. You see, if we get the camera uh, to you, there you see Portengay going around. There's Hornaday. He's coming down the uh, the uh, middle road. There's a road running right through the middle of the pits and everything here. I saw some fire, some flames coming out from underneath the truck just as he turned it off the uh, racetrack surface there. The uh, fire is out now, but there's definitely some kind of problem there. He is under power. We thought he'd blown an engine, but uh, it did start pulling again, so we'll see what's wrong. Well, that's the first time this year we've really seen that truck have any kind of problem. Power steering, we're told. Let's check with Ralph. Well, you can see the crew working on the truck. Ron, what happened to you? I really don't know. Uh, I was going down the front straightaway, just a puff of smoke. The oil light came on and just went in there. I don't think I broke a motor, just maybe an oil line or something broke. I really don't know what happened. Doug Richard, Banjo Grimm, the rest of the crew working on the truck, taking a look underneath the hood there. You can see all the oil that is splattered around inside the motor compartment. It's all over the side of the quarter panels, all over the radiator and so forth. Doug Richard and the crew working on it right now, trying to find out where the problem is, see if they can get it fixed. And there's Hornaday. Something let go there and around it went. Yeah, you could tell he was in oil. You saw a little bit of flame out of it right there. But the whole thing backed up everybody was when, when Rutman's truck would not take off. That was strange, too. He was trying to get down the inside to get out of the way. Let's take another look up front. Now, there you see Rutman moving to the inside. His truck wouldn't take off. Skinner was all over him. He got down and out of the way. And then Hornaday has a problem almost at the same place on the racetrack. Butch Miller very lucky, as was Jack Sprague, not to get that. And you saw Portengate, the black truck, 83, scoot around. He made a great move, but then he was in Hornaday's oil and spun around. How'd they get this through tech? <laughs> we'll be right back to Odessa, Missouri after this. But you were up there for the test day. How'd it go? Well, it... Uh it went pretty well. Most of the guys were a little concerned about there only being one groove, but, you know, nobody was racing side by side up there in a test. They're only running in the bottom groove. When they get to the point that they're going to have to pass, move up, side, up top a little bit, they will. But most of the guys were pretty well pleased with it, said they had done a really good job with the concrete surface. It wasn't near as rough as what they had feared it would be. Mark Martin told me he thought that it really might mess the racing surface up. He came away with an entirely different point of view. Here they clean up the oil from Ron Hornaday's truck, and it's confirmed that an oil line either disconnected or broke. And they're trying to repair that now and get Hornaday back in the race. Remember, he came in here as the point leader with 37 points on Butch Miller. And uh, Ron now, as he sits in the pits, is, has fallen five laps behind. So uh, it's going to really wreak havoc on his point. Leader. And uh, there is the oil tank going to refill. Double check everything here. And P.J. Jones. Oh, he's got a problem. That thing's running hot. And we're trying to pour some cooling into it right now. But, uh, not a good sign. And it's not fog, folks. <laughs> Yesterday, it might have been. Just uh, trying to get that oil dry to pick up what came out of Ron Hornaday's truck. When you're in one of those trucks running about 130 miles an hour down in that corner, it looks like fog because you, I mean, you can't see anything. So we got a few laps to go here till we get that uh, oil dry, scattered out, oil dry, scattered out. You see, he's running slow right there, and you can't hardly see it. You can see right in front of him. Look, at Skinner pulls away. You lose vision on him. Now, they're running about 35, 40 miles an hour. Now, multiply that by three. Imagine what that's like. It's like Butch Miller had over there when the... When he spun, and Corelli ran up behind him. Right. Couldn't see. It's kind of hairy out there sometimes. Now, Corelli is still. So there's work going on P.J. Jones. Trying to get the hood pins down on that Chevy. 
And I like those uniforms. They stand out. And look at who they are. The diehard Sears diehard truck, P.J. Jones. He did, I thought he did quite a job uh, last week in Nazareth, Pennsylvania. He did a great well. First, first time in the booth working with uh, Ken Squire. I thought he did an awfully good job up there. Stay in the truck, P.J. We don't yes, want you in the booth please. yet. Stay in the truck. We don't need any more competition. <laughs> That's right. Joe Rutman out in front of this at 107 laps with Mike Skinner. And Skinner comes in here third in the point standings. 66 wins and three track championships. The California native then came east to try to go Winston Cup racing. Had a couple of starts in the Bush in the Winston Cup series. Then went to work for Richard Petty. And bounced around with a couple of teams. Unable to find a ride that he thought would propel him to major things. But he had rented an engine from Richard Childress on at least one occasion and got to know Richard fairly well. And Richard had an eye on him in the times that Mike was able to run and liked what he saw. I think he was very much a surprise choice by Childress to drive this truck. But he has certainly showed he is deserving of the opportunity. Well, absolutely. He already has two wins this year. Up until this race, he had won five straight pole positions. Of course, he didn't win it this time because he didn't run for the pole. But uh, Mike was driving a bush car owned by a guy named Gene Petty, who's good friends with Richard Childers. And in fact, they won the pole uh, for one of the Bush Grand National races in Charlotte. So he's shown some muscle just about everywhere he's gone. He's finally hooked up with the best team he's ever been with. He's definitely a factor now every week at the Super Trucks race. One to go next time by, and we'll have 91 laps left. Now, the only guy that I would want to be on this next restart is Joe Rutten. Because I can run down in that first turn where all that oil dry is, and I can go where I want to go, how fast I want to go. The rest of the guys just got to try to miss everything. Believe me, it's going to be exciting. There's still some oil dry there, still a little dusty, and it'll definitely be slick. Now, most of the drivers, as you saw Joe Rutman there, wear a full face helmet with a full Lexan face shield covering the entire eye port opening. Some do not. And there is nothing in your eye like a little piece of speedy dry. It just, it takes all of the moisture out, out of the eye socket and boy that's painful and then you've got to got to drive with one eye while you can until it just tears itself out that's that's tough all right let's get ready to race here it'll be 90 laps when they come by yeah one of those little flexor speedy drive feels like a tire the size of yes. the solid here off the, off the race track while ago. green flag Ooh. quick start to a big jump by Ruffin. i don't think skinner was ready at all down through the speedy drive. They're having a good single file now because of the, the speedy drive up in the groove there. Now this is tiptoeing. Yeah. And everybody makes it through cleanly, but it spreads the pack out the whole length of the back straightaway. Skinner and P.J. Jones. Well, Skinner got in the back of P.J. there. He's trying to make up for that, uh, that full start. He just wasn't quite ready to take off. Of course, it's up to Rutman to start the race. Look at Bob Strait. Gets underneath Rutman, and Ooh. here goes Skinner into the lead and P.J. And... Rick Pirelli and Toby Butler. What has happened to Joe Rutman? He's completely off the pace now. I don't know. He's now he looks like he's back to power. He fell back behind Toby Butler. You see, uh, see Butler's truck right behind Corelli, and right behind him is the truck of Joe Rutman. And he continues to lose ground. Though. A little bit. If the truck's running fine, something happened. Here goes Skinner under Bob Strait. Skinner trying to put another lap on Strait there. Well, Strait's trying to get back on the lead lap, Glenn. He had done so against Rutman. Skinner's trying to put him again one lap down right here. He'll never hold him in this groove now because that's where the oil dry is. Watch it. There he goes. So Mike Skinner back to the front. Wow. We got a, I, mean, I really wonder what happened to Joe Rutten. That's, uh, that's a shame. That truck is so fast. He's still running in uh, fourth position. Now our, esti our estimate has P.J. Jones on the lead lap and contending. Up there, we'll have to check that with scoring. However, did he lose laps in the pits making those repairs? I think he lost one uh, when he, not when he made the repairs, but when he came in this last time. I think they left him on the racetrack uh, under caution. Let's go to Joe Rutman's pit. What happened, Ralph? Sammy, can you tell me what's wrong with the truck? Can you tell me what's wrong with the truck? Right now, we got seem to have the clutch flipping a little bit. We're trying to just hold a spot. Maybe we can get in here and fix it, but times are.
our band, we're just holding our own. Danny Houston's a crew chief for Joe Rucker. Thanks, Ralph. Bob Strait trying to get another run at leader Mike Skinner as John Nemechek comes back through the pit area. Corelli under P.J. Jones takes second. Here comes P.J. Jones back underneath. The scoreboard is not carrying Jones among the lead lap trucks. So Corelli is second and Toby Butler now in third. Rutman slid to fourth and Dave Resendez is fifth. Great run by Resendez and we see uh, there's P.J. following uh, Corelli through the corner there. Coming up behind him are uh, Toby Butler in the ortho truck and Joe Rutman in the 84 Ford. He, Rutman looks like he's, he's gained his speed back there. You see him in behind the, the, the yellow uh, ortho truck of Butler. Well, Glenn, if, if he got up in the speedy drive, won't wheel spin feel like the clutch might be slipping? Yeah, but it, up would, there. it wouldn't do it all the way around the racetrack, Mike. Right? That's, yeah. that's what he was feeling, was all the way around the track. Now, it's possible that he could have got some of that dust, you know, some of that speedy drive, some of that grit up in the clutch plate stuff. You, you just don't know. But or he could have just gotten a little hot on the restart there. Let's see if Rutman in 84 can fight his way back. He has caught Toby Butler. Of those front seven trucks, six of them are on the lead lap. P.J. Jones is not. Everyone else up there is. And I'll tell you who he's running is Bob Strait. He is keeping it glued to Mike Skinner's bumper. He's a lap down, but he's certainly uh, not giving away anything right yeah, now. Yeah, he's not holding up the leaders. You saw Resendi's coming. They're straight in 37 to target expediting Ford. Once again inside Corelli's truck. You see Corelli trying to move under straight. Corelli in second place. Uh, oh, and he gets, gets into him just a little bit. Uh-oh, Steve McKeatron on the bottom. Squeeze play, and Corelli Ooh. drives right through there. Well, Corelli made it. P.J. Jones just about did right behind him. Looked like Michael Andretti with that move. Yeah. Great move by Corelli there. Because he couldn't afford to back off. Though. Right. Skinner's getting away from him. And now Strait has glued it to the back bumper. Corelli, you see Strait's stuck there right behind him. He's fast in this second half. He sure is. I well, like this. Look at him running wow. up in the corner there. He is really quick starting off the corner. Now Glenn, this is what I like about this halftime break in the truck series. Somebody who's a little off has a chance to make some changes, take your time, make the changes, make the truck better, and it's a whole new race. You can learn something that way, whereas if you just got to slug it out for another 100 laps, you can't. Well, and Strait has run in the, on this racetrack many times. The ARCA division runs here a lot. He's an old ARCA competitor. Bob Strait's got a lot of experience here. 124 laps complete, 76 to go. Mike Skinner leading the number six of Rick Corelli, Toby Butler, Dave Resendez, and Butch Miller. Not believe it. They came off turn four. Skinner on the bottom. Walker Evans in the middle. Rick Corelli going high. Skinner jumped to the bottom of the racetrack under Evans, who was moving down out of the leader's way. Skinner went through the water, went into turn one, slid up the racetrack, and used Corelli to straighten himself out, and everybody's okay. You won't believe this. Take a look at this, folks. Great piece of driving. Now, look, here he comes off of four. There he goes underneath Walker Evans. The truck gets a little squirrely there. In the water. Yeah, correct. Now, look at this. He's got the back end against Corelli. What a great save. Absolutely a great piece of driving. I saw it. I still don't believe it. Rick Corelli finally, finally gets to the front in a super truck race. Well, there's going to be a new player in this one. Now, Bob Strait is still right there. He now separates the two leaders. And Skinner is doing a little bit of tailgate tattoo on Bob Strait because he wants to get back at Corelli. But Dave Resendez is going to be there in the Jeff Bodine XI Batteries Ford number seven. Now, here's Skinner underneath Bob Strait. I think he may get the pass this time. Yeah, uh, Strait's getting a pretty, uh, pretty severe passing flag there from the flagman, so he's going to have to let him go. Now let's see if Skinner can run Corelli. Now Corelli in the meantime has bolted out to about a 15 truck length lead. The man on the move though is that number seven truck on the right side of your screen, Dave Resendez. A modified driver from Asonic Mass. Got together with Jeff Bodine when Bodine bought the late Alan Kowicki's team. It was housed right next door to Resendez Bush Grand National Shop. They got to talking. Of course they're both from the Northeast. And eventually worked out a deal where Resendez would serve as crew chief and team manager on Bodine's truck. When Jeff was available, he would drive it. When he wasn't, Dave would drive it. That's why Resendez had to start back in 22nd. He's only run half the races. He only has half of that truck's driver points, so he started in the back. But he's been flying. He said he told me this morning, or rather late this afternoon, that the truck really was running pretty well. And it was up until right now when Ron Hornaday just went flying past him. Well, that shows you how strong Hornaday is. Yes. He would be a contender.